Have you heard of a bare bottom aquarium and want to try one for yourself? Or have you tried it and you thought it was weird to have the reflections on the bottom of the tank? Or you didn't like your fish seeing through the tank to the ground if you have one of those open kinds of stands that would let them do that? Stay tuned and today I'm going to show you how to make a bare bottom aquarium look like it has sand. Hey, Fishalotti here with Fishy Review where I do aquarium reviews and how-tos. So today we're talking about a bare bottom aquarium. You may have heard of this. It's something that comes up on the internet. People suggest it. There's a lot of reasons to do it. The first time I heard of having a bare bottom aquarium was when I was listening to the Pet Fish Talk podcast that ended back in 2011. I used to call into that. I was uh, called myself Jay from Indiana when I called into that show pretty frequently over the years. Um, loved talking to the Bailey brothers that ran that show. They had a suggestion that they talked about a lot of having a quarter inch of gravel on the bottom of your tank or less, maybe no gravel, to help keep the tank clean and not have stuff build up in the gravel and still get the benefits of a place for the good bacteria to grow in the tank uh, to help remove fish waste, which is the ammonia and nitrite and that turns into nitrate by way of that beneficial bacteria and the gravel gives them a lot of surface area to live. So it's, it's a good thing to have the gravel in there. Um, but sometimes it's not practical and you can have those bacteria living in other places. You just need to think about that when, if you're gonna take the gravel out, maybe you want a bare bottom tank because maybe you want that look, maybe you have certain needs, uh, maybe your fish just move the gravel around too much and you're tired of it. Maybe you're breeding fish and you're putting baby brine shrimp in the tank and and they would get lost in the gravel. You can't possibly do that with baby fish and baby brine shrimp. They would disappear. At least I don't think it would be a good idea. And so when I had a fish room, uh, I was interested in this idea. And you know, it kind of struck home with me. I, you know, you talk about having a couple inches of gravel. If you have a lot of gravel, you can have anaerobic pockets, and then the anaerobic bacteria in those little pockets. Those can form hydrogen sulfide gas as one of their outputs, which is deadly to fish. I was, years ago once, I was vacuuming my gravel in the tank and I was going along with the vacuum. And as I was doing that, one of those bubbles was in the gravel. I had fairly thick gravel. I hadn't vacuumed it in weeks and uh, probably wasn't doing a good job being a fish person, right? But I was in college, I was busy, right? Everybody gets busy. And you're vacuuming the gravel, this little bubble of gas, just as I hit it, it pops out there's my little active Cory catfish. He was a little active little guy. He swam around. He was a great little fish. He comes along as that bubble comes up. He hits the bubble and he goes swims right into it. And immediately he goes like this, zoop, zoop, dead. I mean, that fast, dead. And I felt really bad. And I understood that it was hydrogen sulfide gas at the time. When I started listening to the podcast, I I thought about that, you know, oh, well, that's that's a solution to that problem that I had. Don't have so much gravel in the tank, but a quarter inch of gravel to me, I'm not sure, doesn't give you enough cushion if you're having rocks in the tank. Um, so that, there's plus pros and cons. But when I started a fish room, I wanted bare bottom tanks because I was feeding baby fish. I wanted things to be as clean as they could. I, I didn't have big rocks in the tanks. I wasn't worried about decorations. So as I was building up my last fish room, I wanted to try this new to me idea out of having a bare bottom tank. And first thing I noticed was that it looks funny. There's reflections. You see the fish and then you see the other fish. You see his reflection underneath, wherever he goes. So you see these reflections and I'll put some video in here I've taken to show where I've demonstrated this. Here's the problem with having a bare bottom tank to me. Here you've got these fish, here they are in a bare bottom tank, and I see multiples. There's three fish, but I see six because the reflection. I mean, I don't want to see the fish on the bottom of the tank. I just don't like that. Got these three neon tetras, and I see three neon tetra reflections. So I want to fix that. I want to have a tank that doesn't show that. That was my problem with it. I just don't like the way that looks and I thought about what can I do. So even besides the reflections, a lot of my stands were metal stands that were open on the bottom. I could have put something under the tank, I could have painted the tanks like I said, but if you have nothing on the bottom, the fish will see through the bottom all the way to the ground. 
And I didn't think that's fair because I, if I, as a human, I don't want to be out on one of those skyscraper catwalks where you look through the glass and you see down a hundred stories. Uh, I, I don't know if a fish, you know, I don't, probably don't think about it that much, but uh, that's got to be, got to do something to their uh, instincts, right? If they're hovering in space, because that's not natural for a fish. So painting the bottoms black works fairly well, but it's boring. And as I was uh, as I was putting these tanks together, I just kept thinking, well, what can I do that's better? And I came across a solution that I like a lot. And before I show you that, if you could just do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, really help me out, really help get this channel started. Whether you do it or not, I'm going to keep making videos, but be great if you could do that. So thanks a lot. Now I'll show you how to make a bare bottom tank look like sand. So here's the tank we're going to demonstrate on. This is one I'm going to use for an angelfish pair once we get this done. And I don't want them to have gravel on the bottom. So this is a 20 gallon high, which is perfect for that. And it's been all cleaned up with water and vinegar and dried up real good. One thing I want to do though, I want to make sure that the part where I'm going to paint it is clean. I'll take some Windex here. Um, you could use rubbing alcohol probably. It's a little more dangerous to use that, I guess, being flammable. But just use some Windex. I'm going to clean it up. Make sure my fingerprints are off. The paint won't stick where your fingerprints are. Get that all off of there. Go all around. Get the corners real good. Get the edges real good. That's where I probably would have touched it. Get it nice and clean. And there we go. Get that clean. Get rid of that. Okay, now I'm going to mask off the tank with some masking tape. Uh, this is some that won't stick if I leave it on for a few days. This, the, the first step has to dry for a while. I, I'm thinking it has to dry about 24 hours. And then I'll put the second coat on after that. So the tape will be on there for a couple days. Put some tape here. I want to mask off the black part here. The, not the whole black part. Not all the way down by the glass. But just this part that's going to sit on the stand. Uh, I don't want paint there. That will help it stick to the stand someday when I want to remove it. On there. We'll leave it hanging up in the air like this. Everything masked off, trying to touch the tank. Which I think I've slightly touched it a couple times already. Okay, get that on there. Now you could take newspaper, you could take whatever you have on hand. I don't have newspaper on hand because a digital newspaper doesn't work for masking a tank. So I've got this painter's masking paper. Just go around like that. I don't want paint to get on anywhere on the rest of the glass. I'm going to go all the way around. Here. Fold that part down just a little bit. Just fold it down as best we can. Cut off some extra. that on the side. All right, we'll go around one more time. This paper's not wide enough. Piece there. All right, now I think that all that's protected. Now, one thing. Do you want to do this in your fish room? No. Is it nine degrees outside right now at my house? Yeah, it is. So, I'm on the other side of the room from the fish. I've got my heater off right now. I'm going to have a few paint fumes, but it's just this little area, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Don't like the idea of overspray on this white wall behind me that was just got done being painted yesterday, but we're going to be careful, and we've got to make do with the conditions that we have. Normally, I would say do this outside. If I could, I would do it outside, but I want to get this video out there. What we're starting with here is this paint. I'll come over here. Can you see the paint? It's Rust-Oleum American Accents Stone. They didn't buy this. I bought this, right? So this is this is all me. But I believe this is the color I used before. There's a couple different shades. A little lighter, a little darker. 
Uh, we're gonna go with this one, and this is, but you gotta look for the stone kind. That's what I'm using. If you wanna do what I'm doing, if you wanna do something else, do something else. But this is the stone one. Not every store had it, so uh, I did find it. This is what I'd used years ago and what I had in my internet article. So, uh, shake it up real good. It says to shake it forever. I'm sure just a minute, whatever, we'll shake it up. Gotta shake this up real good for a minute. We'll skip this part of the video. This doesn't seem to have a little ball in it. When I shake it, it's, I don't hear a ball. I don't think this is the kind of paint with a ball. All right, got that shook up now. And we're gonna give this a shot, okay? Just some nice even coats across. And we'll put on one coat of this and let it dry. I'm gonna test it on the paper. That looks good. Come back across and go again. That's pretty good. I think it's a little light right there. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, so looking at my notes, I see where actually what I gotta do is I have to put coats of this on about 15 minutes apart. It takes two or three to get enough coverage before we put the final coat of plain paint over the top of it. So here we go. Let that dry in about 15 minutes. I'll do it one more time just to be sure. All right, I've come back and put the third coat on here. I'm gonna let it dry 24 hours or more now until it's really dry, and then we'll top coat it with the brown paint over there. And that's what it looks like so far. Pretty cool. Looks definitely different on the inside of the tank, but I don't want to tip it right now. It might run. All right, this texture paint's been drying for a few days. I even put another coat on it and it had some thin spots in it. I think that, you know, one thing you can do would be to look inside the tank. You can see, you know, if there's some light behind it. You can see how much light's coming through. I don't think this is too bad because this has got a pretty good texture there. So, you really can't, I mean, you would use so you would use a couple of cans of this texture stuff to really cover it. So the trick is to put two or three coats on there. It needs to dry longer than I remembered. So even at 24 hours, the stuff is tacky a little bit. You can see where even a day later, I touched it here and some of it stuck to me. Now when I touch it, it's not sticky at all. Even on these really thicker parts here, it doesn't, nothing wants to come up. There's nothing happening to my finger. So. I'm gonna go over it with this color here. It says gloss leather brown. And uh, you know, you could pick whatever color that you wanted. You could go lighter. This is the kind of color I used the last time I used this color of texture paint. So I'm just gonna go with this. Uh, I don't think it'll show up brown in the tank. I think it'll just blot out the light real good. So let's give it a shot here. Come on, blurry. Focus. Thank you. All right. Go a little slower. My paint wasn't coming out that good now, was it? See where I could overlap better. camera really gives it away. Just go over it carefully here. Try to get everything. I end up doing a couple coats. 
I'm no spray paint expert. Wait one minute between coats, it says. We'll wait a minute. All right, go again. All right, wait a minute. All right, last coat, I hope. All right, that should be enough. All right, now that paint is dry, it's time for the big reveal. Pull this tape off. Oh, making a mess, better pull it away from the tank. It's all dry. Doesn't really matter, we're gonna have to see the bottom. Pull that tape off, like that. It's kind of satisfying. All right, keep going. Oh, ripped. That's not satisfying. Can't have ripped tape. All right. Take that off. Take this off. So, here we have, you see the this edge of the tank it does not have paint on it. So that'll keep it from sticking to whatever we set it on. The rest of it's fine. This looks good under here. Now, what does the tank look like underneath? Set the camera down. Look at that. That is pretty. Look at that. Focus. Oh, looks so good. A lot of reflections there from the lights. Look at that bottom. That is, I just love this color. This is, has been my favorite so far. Look from the outside of the tank. Get a good feel for it. So now it looks like sand. It's so cool. Let's get a good look. Look at that. All right. Next thing is we'll have to set this up and get some water in there and get a couple angelfish in here. There's another good view of it with a little bit different lights. Right by the edge there. Look at that. Oh, it looks so cool. I really love this. All right, here it is with fish in it. This is a 20 high that I painted. We've got a pair of angel fish in here, potential breeding pair. They're kind of paired off in my 75 in the house and been shooing all the other angel fish away. Get a good shot of them in there. And uh, kind of a smarmy java moss that's in here. It messed up the tank, so things are a little cloudy with the particles. I wanted to show the bottom. Here's what it looks like under the light. It looks very different from what it looked like just out with no water in it. It looked darker with no water in it. With the fluorescent light on it, it looks a lot lighter, which is the way I remember this the last time I did this. And you kind of ignore the bits of java moss that's all over the place. I like this color a lot. This is a good color. It's a little darker. It's kind of like a dark sand. Of course, I did this one and I did uh, two others to go with it to show what that looks like. The next one is a lighter colored sand and there's one that's black with some white specks. So now we'll have a tank for this breeding pair of angelfish with no gravel on the bottom. I don't want gravel in there. Hopefully they'll have some babies and raise them in here. I don't really want to pull the babies out. Hopefully they're not baby eaters. But I don't want a million angelfish either, so whatever happens, happens. Hopefully they don't lay them on the heater. So there we go, bare bottom tank with the fake sand bottom. Okay, that was the dark one, the darkest one. And there's a little bit lighter color, which I'll show you now. All right, here's the sand bottom on the lighter color sand, which I think looks really good. You snail back there. Okay. This is a tank that just has a couple snails. It's getting cycled. There's nothing in it except a couple sponges and a couple snails. And I hooked that filter up to suck up some, some mess. It's shut off right now. All right, and that's the lighter colored sand of the three. Lightest, of course the other one's black. Can you count that one? This is the lightest colored of the three tanks. 
think that looks pretty good. I think that's so cool looking. All right, we'll go from the side too. Here it is from the side. This is a 20 long tank. Get a good view of it from the side. It just looks so cool like this. So much better than a bare bottom. All right, and here is the third tank that I did with the darkest color. It's a black with these white specks in it. Uh, trying to see if the camera will show it. This kind of looks like uh, like space. You got stars. It's kind of cool looking. I think that'd be good. I've used this color before too. So that's my third example. Looks pretty good. Okay, here's the three colors that I used. Here's this first color that where we did the demo of what it looked like while I was painting it, and then the other two that I showed. This one here was um, stone sienna in the rust -Oleum. Uh, stone paint and then I backed it up with this gloss leather brown ignore the fact that the cans covered in overspray from this stuff and the next one is stone pebble color that was the lighter color which was also nice went over that with gloss khaki and uh, stone black granite was the last one so that's a nice one and went over that with just gloss black I also have another combo that I haven't done yet, but I think would be really nice, and that's this uh, gray stone, and would go over that with gray, of course. So uh, I'm going to try that on a tank soon. Thanks for watching this far. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done it yet, you hit that subscribe and like button. It really help me out. A few things I'll add in here if you've watched it this far. You can get some bonuses, right? Uh, I said the paint was taking a long time to dry on that first one. Well, what I figured out was you need to put a fan and blow a fan around the area so that it's not stagnant air and uh, then the paint dried in hours or a, certainly a day it was very dry uh, and within a couple hours it was easier to overcoat it because as you go over it and it's wet the, the paint splats into the other wet paint and pushes it out of the way so it's better to do light coats and let them dry a bit between but you've got to have that air moving you know if you did it outside in the sun I think that would take care of it Doing it inside didn't help uh, for sure, but it was the only place I had at the time. I did do uh, the black one outside and it dried a lot better. So tell me which one you like the best. Put it in the comments. Did you like this color the best, the darker color, the lighter color, or the black color? Which one did you like the best? Let me know. Or if you've got something else you've done, let me see it. I'd love to see it. Uh, you know, This is just my idea of what to do for a bare bottom tank. So I really appreciate you watching this far. So, this is Fishalotti signing off here. Remember, everybody, have fun. Thanks.